I can totally relate to this one because I've had dreams about women in Spider-Man outfits too, but let's just say they weren't trying to kill me. <gasps> Make sure you like and subscribe and go follow me on my Twitch where I live stream three times a week. That link's down below. Also, my Patreon where I have more content on there that I don't post here. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be reacting to a critical drinker video called Madam Web. <laughs> he was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. Oh my goodness, I don't think I've had this much fun at the cinema in years. Truly, Madam Web is a movie in what? a category all of its own. A film that defies any kind of conventional analysis and laughs in the face of mere mortals who attempt to understand its genius. Even girl. Chris Stockman was so confounded by it that he couldn't bring himself to make an actual review and instead spent 16 minutes and 10 seconds talking about how much he didn't want to talk about the movie. Which definitely makes sense as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, lucky for you guys that I'm neither Chris Stockman Jeez. nor a mere mortal constrained by the limitations of the flesh. So strap in, dear viewer, because it's reviewing time. Now, it's a well-known fact that superhero movies have never been more popular than they are right now, which is why we've got so many all-time classics coming our way this year, like Venom 3 and... Uh... Craven the Hunter. <laughs> And yeah, we may have had one or two Spider-Man movies over the years, but the thing that everyone's been crying out for is a female-centric prequel to the character who can see into the future. Sometimes. When it's convenient to the plot. What? Enter Madam Web, another movie from the studio that brought us the delights of Morbius, written and directed by a woman with no fewer than one feature film to her name, which is this one, and best known for directing and producing a Game of Thrones pilot so good that they had to cancel it because it would have made every other TV show irrelevance. With a team of this caliber behind it, how could Madam Web possibly fail? Dakota Johnson was so pleased with this movie that she fired her agent right after the first trailer dropped, and that spirit of excitement excitement and optimism really carries over into her interviews for the film. I just loved that it was about a young woman whose power is her mind and I thought that that was really important and inspiring. You don't have Great. to know anything about anything <laughs> at all. <laughs> to watch this movie. <laughs> anyway, on with the review. So Madam okay, Web kicks oops. off in the Amazon rainforest oops. in the early 1970s with a research team led by a heavily pregnant Constance Webb. Because she's into spiders, you see. And trekking through a Feels tropical like jungle Park. populated by all manner of highly toxic plants and animals while heavily pregnant is definitely a smart move. I haven't seen Feels this like degree it. of logic and realism since The Last of Us Part 2. So uh, she finds the magical uh, bullshit spider uh, she's looking for, but oh no, she gets betrayed by her assistant Ezekiel who kills the entire team and shoots Constance and leaves her to die and then runs away with the spider research. Which is what? an interesting move when you think about it because I'm pretty sure there's more than enough spiders for everyone and returning home as the only survivor of his team would almost certainly result in a massive search operation, media coverage and lots of questions and attention that he totally wouldn't want, but whatever. Luckily for Constance though, <laughs> a bunch of spider people conveniently show up and help her to deliver baby Cassandra. Wow, that was lucky. But then her luck unfortunately okay. runs out and she dies. Almost like she's served her purpose within the story. Flash forward to okay. 2003 wow. and Cassandra is now working as a paramedic in New York alongside Uncle Ben. Now, you might have a few how questions at this point in the story, like how exactly did Uncle Cassandra ben? get back to America? What did her upbringing look like? How did an uncontacted tribe of spider people know to get her to an American embassy? Well, if those are the first questions that pop into your head, then clearly you're not appreciating the genius of this film and you need to do better. So anyway, Okay, so I'm gonna just go ahead and pause because I'm super confused. Um, yeah, it just sounds like a really basic plot that didn't really, didn't really uh, require too much. You know how if you, I don't know, when you write a school for a play or write a school for a play. Yeah, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna go with it. It's exactly like that. It's exactly like trying to execute something and then just messing it up. It's like writing. A play for school. I can't even insult somebody else because you're so terribly dumb. Yeah, anyways, so this is... Sometimes I do worry about you should see something before you watch somebody react to it or review it because then you won't have any of your own opinions yourself. But then I think about, yeah, but 
am I really going to go watch these movies? Probably not. Which is exactly what somebody would say is, well, if you don't like it, then don't watch it. Okay, I don't think I would like this. I'm probably not going to go watch it. So problem solved. And clearly you're not appreciating the genius of this film and you need to do better. Anyway, Cassie's out on a job one day when she has a near-death experience and learns that she can see a short way into the future. Cool. Meanwhile, Ezekiel starts mm. having dreams about three spider women that are out to kill him. Now, I can totally relate to this one because I've had dreams about women in Spider-Man outfits too. But let's just say they weren't trying to kill me. <laughs> anyway, so Ezekiel decides that the sensible mm -hmm. thing to do is to find them and kill them first. So he uses a computer to scan his brain and map the mental images into a database which he can cross-reference against a covert network of surveillance cameras to find out where the girls live. Which is definitely the kind of thing that you could do with 2003 level technology. Lucky for them though, Cassie gets there just in time to stop him and then they all run away into the woods but then Cassie immediately leaves them again to go read her mother's diary and comes back again to find them at night time. Because truly there's no safer place for three unarmed teenage girls than in the middle of the woods at night. But oh no, Ezekiel finds them once again and Cassie shows up just in time to save them again this time by ramming him with her car and then she leaves them with Uncle Ben to fly to the rainforest to find the spider people that rescued her mum 30 years earlier and it's totally what? fine for her to do this without worrying about Ezekiel finding them again because the script says so and then conveniently enough she almost immediately finds the spider people in the tens of thousands of square miles of unexplored jungle that she has to cover oh, come on! Well, that was lucky. Then they do some spiritual training stuff so that Cassie can learn to harness the force. Boy, he's a spiritual training type I mean, part. the web of life, and become the girl boss that she was always destined to be. But oh no, Uncle Ben's wife goes into labor, which I'm reliably informed that heavily pregnant women are prone to doing. So he has to take her to the hospital along with the three girls so that the rest of the plot can happen. And of course, Ezekiel finds them almost immediately and attacks them, but luckily Cassie shows up again to save the day. Now, considering the last time she took him out by driving a vehicle into him at high speed, how exactly do you imagine she's going to stop him this time? That's right, by driving another vehicle into him at high speed. Because if it ain't broke, don't fix it, I guess. Then they lure him into a fireworks yeah. factory, which is conveniently nearby, and have a fight with lots of explosions, and then he dies when a giant Pepsi sign falls onto him. <laughs> <laughs> but oh no, a random firework hits Cassie in the face and leaves her blind and paralyzed. <laughs> And it's a shame that the whole seeing into the future thing didn't allow her to avoid it, but whatever. <laughs> so then the film ends with Peter Parker getting born, even though the film can't actually say his name for licensing purposes, and Cassie promises to train the other spider women to become the next generation of girl bosses. Now this is all excellent stuff, but the question on your mind is probably, when do we get to see Sidney Sweeney in a skin sight spider woman costume? The answer, of course, dear viewer, is never. Fuck. That's the true genius of this movie, you see. Not giving you what you want or what you need, but what you never realized you wanted in the first place. A bunch of mid-twenties actresses pretending to be annoying teenagers who need to be babysat through the entire movie and never really get to do anything significant. In fact, this movie subverted my expectations in almost every way imaginable, from the schizophrenic cinematography that looks like the DP was having a stroke midway through production, to the dialogue that ranges from absurd exposition dumps to redundant recap of stuff that's already happened, to the nonsensical editing that genuinely made me question what was even supposed to be happening. And yes, the film could probably have wasted valuable time exploring ideas like the inherent tragedy of knowing the future but being unable to- Yeah, the entire plot sounds extremely messy and not really well thought out. If you're going to have the her run away, it would make more sense that if you're trying to protect people, have them go with you or leave them in an actual stable place. The whole premise is that she can see into the future. I get it. She probably can't control it. Why are there so many things specifically, though, that kind of goes against that, which is, oh, no, I didn't see that this was going to happen. I couldn't have guessed that this was going to happen. I didn't even think that this would be a possibility. I mean, not even a thought thing into the future. Wouldn't you just assume, yes, his wife is extremely pregnant. Those types of women typically go into labor, like he said in the video. So it's a little silly to just, I'm going to run away and try to find these spider people. I mean, if something happened to your mother and you've already read her diary at the beginning of the movie, it also kind of sounds like it would be a situation where you would understand that they were on this exhibition or whatever trip for weeks or something, and that she only found spider people when they found her. So she never actually really found them. She was dying, and they decided to step in. Which means, why would you even go and risk and just believe so easily? Ah, I bet I could find them. Maybe I could, like... But it's in the middle of you trying to protect these three girls, so they should at the very least come with you? 
if they're spider people too or I don't know just maybe not left with a man who's also trying to protect his own wife who's super pregnant. And yes, the film could probably have wasted valuable time exploring ideas like the inherent tragedy of knowing the future but being unable to prevent it, and juxtaposing that knowledge against the enormous personal sacrifice required for the protagonist to fulfil her destiny oh. so that she can ultimately help three young women to fulfil theirs, but instead it chose to focus on more important concepts like spider people and product placements. There's just so many layers of mystery and meaning to peel back with this film that Stanley Kubrick would have been green with envy if he was around today. And it really does go to show that taking a writing and directing team with no relevant experience and no actual accomplishments to their names and putting them in charge of a hundred million dollar superhero movie really can pay dividends. And honestly, if this is the level of quality we can expect from Sony going forward, then the future truly is bright for the Venomverse. Anyway, that's um, all I've got Venomverse. for today. Go away now. Honestly, I think that I horribly misspoke with the whole maybe not a lot of people were looking forward to this movie anyways. I should have said that because a lot of people very easily probably were. That's how a lot of movies actually happen with superheroes is you read a comic and maybe the fan base is only for the comic book people because there's not a movie on it. But then as soon as you start kind of picking up when that there's going to, going to be a movie, especially on a character that hasn't had a movie yet, it's going to excite a lot of people who were fans about this character and already know this character and already have ideas of how the movie should be. But then you just see this mess of CGI that clearly has gone backwards the last few years. And then a story that's horribly put together. I mean, take your time. Like, you have so much more money than people who made comics did. And they, they had a, like, a really thought out story. You could just not rush it, maybe make a first one and leave out the whole progression of it. You're going to have the first movie have a message for something that you're trying to kind of hit home with. You don't have to do the, oh, origin story if you really don't want to deal with a whole movie like that. But you could do and skip it and just have Madame Web and then maybe later do an origin story just to give it the right amount of attention. I still hope that you guys like this video. If you haven't already, make sure you go like and check out Critical Drinkers uh, channel if you haven't already, and then uh, like and subscribe to mine, and I'll see you all next time. Thank you for watching.